So they have floated the idea of what's called, what they're calling a billionaire's tax. Now, this is a bizarre tax. It's, it's a kind of a tax that no country in the Western world has ever, as far as I know, no country in the world has ever put a tax like this together. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a real piece of work. It's a, it's a particularly disgusting tax. It's economically unbelievably destructive. It's a tax uh, motivated by envy and nothing else. Uh, nobody, e even in Sweden, Denmark, the, the so-called redistributive countries of Europe, or France, for example, would think of a tax like this. You know, the idea is to tax anybody who has wealth over a billion dollars, over a billion dollars, on their capital gains, on their capital gains. But we already tax capital gains. We tax today capital gains when it is realized. That is, let's say I buy a stock at $10, and a year later, I got really lucky and I sell it for $20. The $10 that I made, that gets taxed. But let's say I bought a stock for $10. I sell it the next year for, uh, well, I sell it, I sell half of it next year for $20, right? I only pay the capital gains taxes on the, one, on the part that I sold. Half of it, is what's called unrealized. I've made money on that investment, but I haven't realized it. I haven't sold it. I haven't cashed out. Take Elon Musk, for example. Elon Musk founded Tesla. He still owns, I don't know, let's say 25% of Tesla. Tesla is worth, I don't know, last I saw, just to round numbers up, a trillion dollars. Elon Musk, because he owns 25% of Tesla, is worth $250 billion. But Elon Musk has not sold, let's assume Elon Musk has not sold any shares of Tesla. So he hasn't paid any taxes. R remember, on, on this $250 billion. Remember that uh, he didn't buy the shares his basis of the shares is very, very low because he got them when the company was founded for the most part. So he has a capital gains of $250 billion, but he's not gonna pay any taxes on them until he starts selling the shares, until he starts divesting them, selling them. And this is why people complain about billionaires, that they have so much wealth, but they pay so little taxes because they don't pay taxes on that wealth. And if the wealth grows, but they're not realizing it, they're not selling that stock, they don't pay taxes on it. And that pisses off a lot of people. So what this bill would have done is basically placed a, a, about 25% tax on unrealized capital gains. So for example, what they would have done with Elon Musk is they would have said, okay, you got in at zero, it's now worth $250 billion. We're going to tax your $250 billion at 25%. Suddenly, Elon Musk is going to have a tax bill of $70 plus billion. Actually, the actual math turns out that Elon Musk, under the proposal that the Democrats have, would have had to pay $50 billion in taxes in one year, in the first year of this bill. And then afterwards, only the incremental increase taxes on that. $50 billion in taxes. Now notice, it would have been a tax that only 700 Americans would have paid. Not every year, just the first year. And then every year, it would have been determined by how much Tesla stock would go up. The more it went up, the more he'd pay. But in the first year, he'd have to pay $50 billion. Now note, that if you're the Waltons, Sam Walton's children, and you've inherited stock 
in Walmart worth billions and billions of dollars. And Walmart stock has not done that well since you inherited it. And maybe you've already sold some of it off and you've diversified and it's in real estate and it's in all kinds of other projects and it's in all the other places. Notice that you would actually pay very little money, even though you're a billionaire, but you would have very little unrealized capital gains. So this is particularly going to hurt the nouveau riche. It's particularly going to hurt the owner, entrepreneur, who's built his company up and is now worth more than a billion dollars. It's particularly going to hurt entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs. Now, how is Elon Musk going to get $50 billion to pay the tax? He doesn't have $50 billion lying around. Well, he's going to have to sell his shares. His ownership in Tesla will go down significantly, which is not good for anybody. It's not good for corporate governance. It's not good for Tesla. It's not good for Elon Musk. And the government's going to take it. And instead of $50 billion being, in a sense, in Tesla, I think of the price pressure when you're trying to sell 25% of the stock in a company, what that would do to the price. And now the government has it to waste on its social programs. I mean, talk about highway robbery. Talk about highway robbery for 700 people. I mean, I don't know how this is constitutional. I don't know how this is not um, uh, discriminatory, disgusting, abusive. Makes no economic sense. It's completely destructive economically. Every dollar you take out of a billionaire's pocket is a dollar that's not invested. It's a dollar that's not used for productive means. It's a dollar that now, in a sense, is working to slow economic growth not to expand it. It's, it's not clear what happens. What happens in a year where the stock market goes down? What happens if, because, maybe because Elon Musk sells $50 billion of uh, Tesla stock, what happens if Tesla stock goes down 50%? Will the government refund Elon Musk's money? It's not clear. We haven't seen the final proposal yet. What happens if other billionaires, when the stock market goes down, they paid? By the way, uh, Jeff Bezos, another one of these evil billionaires, right, will have to pay $44 billion. $44 billion in taxes. Talk about confiscation, a confiscatory tax rate. It's... It's absurd and insane. You can't tax what has not been realized. I mean, you can, and they are, and they, they want to. Anyway, this was on the table. Every economist I know wrote about how ridiculous this is, how pathetic it is. I mean, everybody, every good economist I know, people who pretend to be economists. I'm sure Richard Wolff thought this was fantastic. So did, I, I don't know about Paul Krugman. Paul Krugman... Hard to tell what he would have thought of this. The whole thing was just insanity. Now, you have to give some of the senators and House members credit. Some Democrats in the House said, we can't vote for this. This is insane. It probably can't pass constitutional muster, as if they care. And, and this is just stupid policy. And they basically vetoed it. Manchin, Mnuchin in, in, in the Senate said no. And now it's off the table. So the Democrats are back to square one. They have lots of ideas of spending money. Yeah, AOC loves it, of course. Uh, they have lots of ideas about spending money. But they promised, and some of them want to fulfill that promise, surprisingly enough, they promised to also raise taxes, to make it, quote, revenue neutral. 
and it can't figure that one out. So the latest proposal, latest proposal is, I'm just giving you a heads up, warning, to tax, to increase, to have a 3% surcharge, an extra tax of 3% on anybody earning more than $10 million. So instead of a billionaire tax, this is now a millionaire tax, it's only 3%, so it's significantly lower than what it was before. While this is horrible, it's probably significantly less damaging economically and certainly less stupid economically. Still evil and nasty and confiscatory and you know, loading up the rich you know, to pay for programs for the middle class. It, it's not even, you can't even use the altruism game here of, oh, it's about the poor. No, it, this is, these are all programs that are meant to help the middle class. So let's screw people who are incredibly successful in order to hand out free primary school education to a bunch of parents. Elderly care, you know, all kinds of stuff like that at the margins, increasing all the social programs in every direction. And of course, one thing you know, by the way, this is true of the, of the capital gains tax, the un, unrealized capital gains. The idea was, um, you know, it was a billionaire tax. But what happens to all billionaire taxes? Do you remember the um, alternative minimum tax? I forget when it was passed. It was passed a long, long time ago. And the alternative minimum tax was supposed to, ta was supposed to make sure that some of the richest Americans, a small number in the thousands, of rich families who weren't paying taxes because they found all kinds of loopholes. The alternative minimum tax was a way to, to, to get them to pay at least some kind of minimum. And it was just a few hundred families. Today, I think almost half of taxpayers pay the alternative minimum tax. It's ens it ensnares everybody. You know, the income tax, when it was uh, passed in 1914, constitutional amendment and Congress passed the first tax, was very low, and only 7% of Americans paid income tax. That was 1914. Went through two years as, as uh, President Wilson prepared us to go into the dumbest war ever, World War I. It was expanded to include almost all Americans. So never believe that a tax will stay a billionaire tax. Then it becomes a, what about the guy who makes 900 million? Well, and if he's get taxed, what about the one who makes five hundred million? Or is worth five hundred million? And and hey, what about the hundred million guy? And look, why don't we just tax the whole one percent? What about the top ten percent? And soon the middle class are paying taxes on unrealized capital gains. Every tax proposed where they said, Oh no, only the rich will pay, has always been expanded, and the definition of rich has always been expanded. So let me just say how thankful I am to, to Senator Sinema and Senator, uh, Senator Manchin, um, how thankful I am to the centrist Democrats in the House, there are not a lot of them, but the ones who are, for stopping these insane proposals. Yeah, this is Ron uh, Widens, Widens, White, I don't know how you pr pr pronounce it, the head of the Finance Committee in the Senate's proposal. He's, he's the senator. Uh, thankful to all the senators, Democrats as they may be, who have resisted this insanity. Um, it's nice to see that the Democratic Party is not a monolith of nutty progressives. This is still bad, but at least not a monolith of nutty progressives. Um, Epa says flat tax already. You're not going to get a flat tax. There's no, nobody is incentivized to provide a flat tax. Note the Republicans stop talking about flat tax, that Trump was never for a flat tax. Republicans are not for it, um, never have been. Right. So happy to see proposal after proposal after proposal defeated. It would be great if Biden's agenda gets killed by the infighting within the Democratic Party just like repealing Obamacare was killed by the infighting within the Republican Party and the lack of leadership from the White House. Uh, it, it would be good to see the Democrats following suit. And, and as I've told you many, many times, my favorite 
uh, balance of power in Washington is, is gridlock. And one of the great tragedies of the Republican, of, of Trump, was that he managed to lose the Republicans the Senate, which I thought was pretty safe for Republicans. Uh, luckily, we still have Manchin, who's kind of a half Republican, and, and Cinema, Sin who's somewhat uh, leans uh, on economic issues in the right direction. Um, this is all good. Uh, you know, the real enemy is government spending. So uh, what I'd really like to see defeated is any spending plan that the government proposes. I think something will pass. I think Democrats will coalesce around some smaller bill and they will get it passed uh, by the end of the year. They have to do something next year is, is, uh, is midterms. Uh, nothing happens in Congress during midterms because everybody's afraid. Uh, so everybody sticks to the status quo. So anything Democrats want to pass is now. If you have any influence on Democratic senators or House members, encourage them not to pass anything this year. But I think they will. It'll just be a smaller, uh, less effectual bill with smaller, less effectual taxes, less damaging taxes. All of that is for the better as compared to the alternative. Of course, none of this would be on the table. None of it. If Republicans hadn't lost the House in 2018 and hadn't lost the Senate in 2020. So you can thank Republicans for being stupid enough uh, and pathetic enough and incompetent enough to lose both the House and the Senate and the White House, of course, uh, in a span of, four, of two years. Two years. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support. Or go to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.